And each one of us is encoded with the message to wake up with this idea of fully living with this. It's not something we have to go out and get somewhere. Everybody, do we all have that? This is what Susan was just talking about. And a lot of us are getting this even more and more, that the Christ is not a person. Christ was not the last name of Jesus. Even though my mother often called that out <laughs> in her home. Um, Christ is not a person and it is not the man Jesus. Christ is the degree of stature that Jesus attained, the potential stature that dwells in every human. It is the consciousness. Some other groups might call it the Buddha consciousness. God consciousness. Some of us might call it divine consciousness. It is a way of being in the world. Christ is the same consciousness that lives in you that lived in Jesus. Now there are churches that I used to teach in who told me I better not be saying that. There was a time when I walked into my old charismatic churches and I said, Christ consciousness, Father, Mother, God. And they said, oh, you can't say that here. I can say it now. <laughs> the vision of Jesus. Do you think Jesus pondered in his heart the vision that was growing in him? Mm -hmm. Of course he did. Don't you know he went to Wednesday night contemplative services? <laughs> he went to oneness blessing services. Don't you know he meditated? He took himself away into the desert. He pondered this idea. And I'm sure more than once he must have thought, is this true? Can I believe this? Can I believe this? And his mother and father were there to say, yes, you can believe it. This is true. And that's what we do for each other. We, we look into one another's eyes, we embrace one another, and with our words, with our touch, with our presence, we're saying, you can believe this. You can know this. This is what is living within you. I'm here to support this idea, and I'm here to help you remember. Each one of us are saying that to one another and being that for one another. That is the greatest gift. That's the greatest gift to remind each other, this was not reserved just for Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, this is not reserved just for Jesus. This is not reserved just for Jesus. <laughs> the vision of this Jesus. <laughs> I'm summoning, summoning this vision up this morning that humankind would know we are the light of the world, we are love, and we are seed carriers of light consciousness. Amen. Amen. Jesus said me that letter this morning. <laughs> you are seed carriers of this consciousness of light. Okay. Jesus saw the coming race. He knew that it was going to take a while. Golly, if I had been living in those days, which you were. <laughs> and, and if Jesus said to me, which maybe he did, you know, this is going to take about 2,000 years to you know, move forward in human consciousness. I probably would have thought, 2,000 years? What about next week? Couldn't it just be maybe 100 years? 2,000 years? And then I realized many of us would be signing up to be here now to watch it unfold even more powerfully. How exciting. You and I see it, we feel it, we sense it. And what else? The birth of it. Again, the birth of the Christ just wasn't just reserved for Jesus. And if we're paying attention, life, God, universe, the divine brings to us in many, many ways the gifts, the treasures, the blessings that speak to who we are. And our job is to receive those blessings in the consciousness of who we are. 
How many of us have said, oh, I could never think that about myself. I could never think that I'm the light of the world. Gosh, with what I've done, oh, if they only knew. Or what I've left undone, or what I've said, or what I've done said, oh, if they only knew, they would never think I was the light of the world. Let's take a deep breath. This seed consciousness is in every single one of us, no exceptions. <coughs> this seed consciousness of light is in those of us who choose to do an act of terrorism. This seed consciousness is in the heart of those of us who sometimes speak words of bigotry and unforgiveness and anger and rage. This seed consciousness of light is within even those who hurt their children. This consciousness of light is even within those children who've been hurt and who are so wounded they can't yet see it. This seed consciousness is in every one of us, no exceptions. And for those of us who have come out of churches who still say that one group or another group is wrong or right or not good enough, bless those churches, bless those individuals who still feel that they have a right to say that anyone is less than the beautiful light of God. Bless them. Is that okay? Yes. It's the easiest and most powerful thing we can do. We are talking about the awakened consciousness of humankind. And who reminds us of this consciousness? Everybody raise your hand. On my own. <laughs> Every one of us does the reminding. And none of us is exempt from that job. I hear people say, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Here's a clue. Every one of us is meant to remind the other that we are the light of the world. If you feel like you're not doing enough, find somebody today to say to them how beautiful their light is and how glad you're shining in the world. Just find somebody. This is a poem I often read here. I won't read the whole thing again today. Just to say this. This beautiful teacher, Hafiz, saw this. And he said, I wish I could show you the astonishing light of your own being. I wish I could show you when you're in darkness, when you're feeling the darkness, I wish I could show you the astonishing light of your own being. And the person who brought this point to me was this beautiful being. Oh. He brought to me this message. And you and I are bringing each other this message. So this morning we're holding in our hearts beautiful Sky St. John who transitioned out of his body message. And his beautiful Unity Church of Hawaii. As they're meeting today and holding each other and loving each other, his message was, simply put, you are the light of the world. I wish I could show you the astonishing light of your own being. His whole life was about that. Now let's take a deep breath. <clears throat> You and I have a job. And that job is simply wake up to the astonishing light of our own being and remind each other of this astonishing light of our own being. That's our job. That's our job. And life, God's spirit, the divine, brings us many, many gifts and opportunities to be that, even in the midst of sadness and grief, and uncertainty. Our hearts will break and open so that we can never close them again. Amen. Our hearts 
are meant to be the generator of love and awakening in the world. This is the most magnificent generator of love and peace. I don't have to go to Ace Hardware and buy a generator. <laughs> I've got the most powerful generator in my heart right now to generate love and peace and awakening, even in the midst of sadness and uncertainty. So Jesus said something, allegedly. This is the story. I personally believe that he actually said this. He called the guys together. <laughs> he called the disciples together. I was with my niece and my grandniece uh, the last few days up in Atlanta seeing uh, the Nutcracker. My little 11-year-old niece was in the Nutcracker. And we were remembering that my niece, who's now almost 20, when she was about three, it was Christmas time, and her father, the son of a Baptist minister, he said, Marie, Tell us the Christmas story very proudly. You know, we all gathered around as a little three-year-old. They've been practicing evidently. So Marie, tell us the Christmas story, honey. And she says, well, the angel came to Mary, and, she, and the angel said, Mary, you're going to have a baby. And Mary said, whoa. <laughs> Before we go to my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, she got two very important stories combined. <laughs> Jesus, I do not feel that Jesus was saying that the bread and the wine became his body and his blood. Sorry, former Catholics. Here's what I do feel. Why do you think we're here, Martin? <laughs> Here's what I do feel. Jesus was saying, when he said, remember me, do this in remembrance of me, that Jesus was saying, take the body of my teaching, take the yes. fullness, the bread of life in my teachings, and incorporate that into your own life, mm -hmm. into your own thinking. Take this, digest these teachings. Take them into you. Let them live in you. Let them nourish you. And the Spirit represented by the wine, and this is grape juice, by the way, the spirit of life that moves through us, enlivening us, incorporating into our body, our cells, every fiber of our being, the Holy Spirit of life, Jesus called it the river of life that moves through us. And it's available to every one of us, and not just when we take communion, Every time we ponder these things, the spirit of the living God is moving through every cell and atom of our being and awakening in us. Do we get it? <laughs> every time we ponder this, there's a scripture that says, think on these things. David and I had it read at our wedding. It's from Philippians. Think on these things. Think on the things that are good and holy and right. Think on the things of peace and love and kindness. Think on these things because those thoughts enliven and heal and renew us. That's the Holy Spirit moving through us. So when the Holy Spirit moves through us, we take the bread, we're going to take the bread, we're going to dip it into the juice, and then we're going to eat it. It's not to make you any more holy than you already are. It's not to make you something to save you, or it's not to make you better. You already are the light of the world. This is to remind us that we are the light of the world. Do this in remembrance of this divine idea. So in a moment, I'm going to lower the lights again, and I'm going to ask that... One of our musicians plays lightly in the background, just ever so lightly. We're going to come forward. This group, Dan, you're going to start it back there. You're going to come up the aisle. You're going to come right to this part of the altar. Take your bread. Dip it in the grape juice. And that will be your communion. And then you're going to go back to your seat on this side. 
And Anne Marie, you'll start back there. You'll come forward here. You'll come forward here, and you'll take your communion, and you'll go back that way, okay? When you come up, David and Susan are going to hand you an unlit candle. And if you'll please take that back to your seat, because later on we're going to light them all at the same time. Okay? Okay. Someone, I know we didn't discuss this. This is what's called, be ready when the spirit calls. <laughs> we're going to lightly play in the background. Lights are going to lower. So let's all take a deep breath. Ever so lightly, Bill. Ever so lightly. We're going to take a deep breath, and we're going to ponder in our hearts. What is it that I'm remembering right now? What is it that I'm remembering in this moment? What is it that I'm pondering in my heart? When I take the bread and the juice, what is it that I'm allowing to move through me? Imagine that you're there in the upper room, Jesus, the disciples, and you too, your beautiful presence, as you take the bread and dip it in the juice. This is a holy ceremony. It's a sacred ceremony to remind us of who we are. Dan, Emery, it's Everyone is welcome to take communion, whether you're a member of the church or not. Everyone's welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 
the message of knowing that it's up to us to create peace. We bless all people everywhere who are in their places of worship. Remembering this message, even in a world of uncertainty and confusion. This morning we ponder these things in our hearts. We ponder this idea of awe, this feeling of awe, this feeling of reverence, of what is growing and birthing within us. Even in our moments that feel dark or sad, we continue to ponder this growing light within us. We cannot stop it. It will not be stopped. The light gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Do this in remembrance of this light. Do this in remembrance of the message that Jesus expressed in the world. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you to all of us, to every one of us, and thank you to all those who helped us grow this light. All of our teachers, the ones with whom we felt great joy to be with, and even those where there was, wo where there was wounding. We give thanks for all of our teachers. Ponder these things in our heart. And we say, let it be. And so it is. Namaste.
Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is the time when we have the opportunity to give of ourselves in a physical way. I invite you to take your offerings and let us give them a very special blessing. Perhaps as you hold them in the palm of your hand, you feel that magnificent light and love vibrating into your offering. And now we're going to do our hand mudra. Together, please. I am light, flowing through me, blessing these gifts to radiate peace. We'd like to do a song for you by John Lennon. <laughs>
blessing. We, those of us who get here early get to hear these guys practice. And I forgot that that John Lennon song, can we have some lights too? Oh no, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I forgot that, that, word, that the words of that song say, no more war if you want it so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Disciple John Lennon, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. who did this in remembrance of this idea. Mm -hmm. No more war in our minds and our hearts and our words and our actions. No more war, if we want it. How beautiful. So let's do a few announcements before we do our circle. Next Sunday, our annual Unity Burning Bowl, the message is surrendering to the divine. And I'll be here with you to do that oneness blessing will be happening right after service in our beautiful Peace Chapel. An eight-week class is starting January 7th with our beautiful Bonnie Scrudato. This is not Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Will Tuttle, who's been here doing his work with his book, World Peace Diet. So that class starts January 7th. Flyers are downstairs. And on Sunday, January 12th, this beautiful couple <laughs> will be here. David will be presenting the 11 a.m. service entitled Sacred Ceremony, and then in the afternoon to kick off our 2014 year, uh, whoops, we're going to just go back to that a little bit. One to four is a workshop sacred ceremony, and those flyers are downstairs too. Okay, let's, yes, please stand up and make your announcement, yes. Hi everybody, um, I'm Kate Richter, your treasurer, but I'm up here in, um, <laughs> and we, <laughs> I, I don't get to count that gold crown, uh, Miss Charlene was, but this survey is downstairs, Carol, uh, Carol, oh, you're already standing, raise your hand, mm -hmm. Carol Dwyer brought this idea to us about a community dialogue, you are Unity Christ Church. We really want your input on this. January 19th is going to be the, uh, the community dialogue, but we want your ideas. This is a survey. You will see these sheets in your chairs, and there's also some downstairs. You also got it electronically if you're on our emailing list. We really, really want your input on this so that we know the best questions to be asking and to facilitate for January 19th. We'd love to have these back by January 5th uh, so that uh, the folks who will be putting the questions together have ample time to get together and do that. Okay, so let's, let's all get these in. It's really important. Thank you. Okay, y'all, okay, let's rise and make our peace. Did everybody get a candle? Okay, yes, I do. I have a Yes, you bring your candle, please. This is the magic moment. Bring this your candle. Magic moment. And we're going to ask that the lights be dim. Okay. Now, let's remember that right after service, we have refreshments that Charlene has lovingly gathered for us down in the fellowship hall. So we'll do refreshments, and then... And then we'll come back up here for those of us who want to be with Bobby Shropshire and friends to sing some Christmas carols. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yes. Y'all please come back up. We're going to sing. We're going to laugh. We're going to have a real good time. I promise it's going to be a Maybe even dance. Okay. So we say our prayer for protection now for all of us, all those we're holding in our hearts. And then when we sing the peace song, please take note that the words have been changed just a little bit. To protect the To protect, yes. To, the words have become, thank you, Jeannie and Lindsley last Sunday for saying, let's do that again. Yes, there is peace on earth. And yes, it begins with me. Now, we tried this a few years ago, and there was a public outcry. <laughs> we could not change the words from let there be peace. And so we're going to try this again. And we'll see how this goes to say yes to proclaim we are already the light of the world. So our prayer for protection. Deep breath. 
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And now we're going to do our peace song. Christmas carols. 